Yeah, one of the big dogs I would say would be plastics. And you know, we're hearing so much about BPA, but I don't think people really grasp what BPA is. I mean, originally when it was brought out, 1890s, it was used as a synthetic estrogen. And up until the 1930s, it was actually added to animal feed as a synthetic estrogen to fatten up the animals. At one point in time, it was literally used in human scientific trials as a synthetic estrogen. So they stopped using it as a synthetic estrogen. It got replaced by something called DES. And then, boom, in the 1950s, we're using it in plastics. Okay, so now we're producing, you know, 12 plus billion pounds of this substance per year. This is a synthetic estrogen, and we're putting it out in the environment. If you test umbilical cord, or you test rain, or you test, you know, seawater or fish, there's BPA everywhere. In fact, it, gosh, there was an industry uh, a website that I went to, and they were bragging about how in the year 2012 alone, they increased the use of BPA by 745 million, 800,000 pounds. Okay, estrogen works at what, the nanogram level? And we're adding 746 million pounds in one year to our environment? This just, it seems ridiculous. But that's not the only thing, of course. You know, we have these other estrogen-like plasticizers like phthalates. And phthalates are in the air. I mean, one of my big pet peeves is I go walking through the woods by my house, and when people are, are cleaning their, their, their clothes and they use dryer sheets, you can smell the dryer sheets. You can smell those fragrances. Or you're on a plane and someone has cologne or aftershave or something. These scented agents, these coloring agents and personal care products and cleaning products, they are fixed in the product with phthalates, another plasticizing agent. Man, even vinyl curtains, you know, the mattress covers you put for babies, they're made of vinyl, right? This vinyl off-gasses this phthalate. We see association with obesity and autism and even cancer. Now, everybody knows about breast cancer being, you know, certain strains estrogen positive. But they've actually tracked in northern Mex Mexico when women would consume more personal care products, things like lotions, sunscreens, creams, shampoos. When they would use more of these products, they would get higher levels of these plastic agents, these phthalates, in their urine. As the urine levels went up, they would increase their risk for cancer, breast cancer specifically. So for the postmenopausal women who now have lower estrogen in their body and they're bringing in these external estrogens, they had a 2.2 times increase, right? So a 220% increase. For the women who were premenopausal, I mean, they already had, you know, a good amount of circulating estrogen, and then they added in these external estrogens through their personal care products, they had an increase of 413%. All right. So we really have to be conscious about limiting our exposure, and we really have to be conscious about excreting more of these. And one of the best ways to excrete more of these plasticizing compounds turns out to be sweating. So I like to recommend to my clients, I say, you know what, get the dance party going on. <laughs> That's one of the best ways to get a good sweat happening. Or you can take an Epsom salts bath, and before you take your Epsom salts bath, drink a cup of ginger tea. So not only are you getting this wonderful magnesium and sulfur in, but you're also getting in some of these ginger compounds that are anti-inflammatory, they really help with rheumatoid arthritis, and they increase the amount you sweat in a hot bath. So I would say you have a great excuse to have a cup of tea, <laughs> take a bath, and get your dance on.